population as a total fertility rate, if you see here, only Andhra Pradesh is uh, below ninth state, sir, below replacement rate. Even uh, Karnataka is uh, Karnataka is with us, Telangana is with us, West Bengal is with us, Tamil Nadu less than us, 1.7, Goa 1.7, Tripura 1.7, Kerala 1.6, Punjab 1.6, Sikkim 1.2. <coughs> All India also sir, it is a 2.2. So, if you touch this, it is very dangerous area, so on. Anyway, population is going to reduce. Development will take place, population will reduce. It is a cycle. Always, now, there is a psychology. People are not getting married. If they marry also, they don't want to have any children. Enjoy life. Now, <laughs> that is the stage why you are touching this subject, sir. So I am requesting you to be very clear sir on this and ultimately we are expecting some positive actions from your sides. This is my request because this uh, feeling, humiliation, sentimental feeling will be there forever for Andhra people. That is not good for the nation. We are prepared to work very hard. So, Chairman Sir, you know very well, all members also, I am requesting all of you to do justice for Andhra Pradesh, for giving. Anyway, you are going to consider positive report for the nation level also, for progressive report, for future development. Your uh, report is very crucial at this crucial juncture. India has to move double digit growth. There is potential. We have to reach there. Then only we'll, as on today, I'm, I don't have any doubt, it is a matter of time, India will be among top three in the world in the course of time. America, China and India. But how far, how fast we are going to reach that stage and how to dominate America. In the near future, I, I'm, I don't see, we'll compete with China. China is moving very fast. With this, I'm thanking you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Andal. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Chief Minister, would you, uh, we are in your hands, would you like us to make a few preliminary Please, comments. I will be very happy. Uh, and uh, then move on. Even you can ask some more questions also. <laughs> you I want to grill me, you can grill me. I didn't want to <laughs> say that, but uh, I think that's what we, we may end up in, in, may end up in doing. If that is all right uh, yeah. by Finance Minister, yeah, yeah. by you, Honorable <laughs> Chief Minister. First of all, uh, uh, let me, uh, Chief Minister, thank you profoundly, you and your colleagues for you have lived up to your characteristic reputation. You have left nothing unsaid for anyone to uh, supplement or join. Your presentation has been masterful. Uh, in accordance, you were the originator of uh, the original CEO <coughs> making PowerPoint presentations to, to all of us. You have continued this indelible track record. and. Uh, you have displayed it uh, once again before us today. So let me begin by first complimenting and congratulating you for your consistency in that. Second, I think that I, you ended by this very nice uh, quotation of Robert Frost. Uh, it could be applicable to Andhra Pradesh. It's equally applicable to the Commission. We also realize that we have miles to go before we sleep and miles to go before we sleep. We also realize that we have promises to keep. So we are uh, fully in tune uh, with the broad summation of the uh, sentiment uh, which you, Honorable Chief Minister, has made. We begin by uh, making four very
broad observations. First of all, we are one with you when you say that uh, this is, report is crucial. Uh, it is, comes at an uh, inflection point in the Indian growth dynamics. And that there can be no two opinion that if India has to grow at the kind of growth rates, Andhra Pradesh has to grow in the manner which in which you have presented. For India to try and grow at 8-9%, Andhra must be assisted and must be helped in growing at over double digit numbers over a sustained uh, period of time. Let me also assure you that you have ended your remarks by saying positive action. We assure you, Chief Minister, of our positive action. We recognize that fact in how this bifurcation took place, the enormous burdens which have been placed on you, and the huge expectations which given your own track record and uh, your record of being an enlightened leader uh, using and harnessing technology as a front runner in trying to foster a new generation of reforms. And therefore I think that uh, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to you, to the people of Andhra Pradesh for giving what we believe would be within our capability a positive uh, set of recommendations for the good of uh, Andhra Pradesh. Now you have made a number of uh, suggestions uh, for the consideration of the Commission. I'll request my colleagues of course to also join in but at this stage uh, I want to make uh, uh, four or five uh, uh, very brief comments and uh, then continue from there. First and foremost, uh, in your presentation you pointed out on the kind of commitments contained in the Reorganization Act of Andhra Pradesh of 2014. And it curiously happened, uh, Chief Minister, I was present in, the, in Parliament, in the Upper House, when this bill came up for consideration. In fact, I participated in that debate myself. Uh, the first thing that strikes me on the 10 things which you expected from the Reorganization Act, and this may, um, some of which as I say may not have a direct relevance to the work of the Finance Commission, but since you have shared a bit of the past, I feel obliged to join you in that, uh, in, the, in, in, in the same strain. You know, in all other previous reorganization acts, Chief Minister, there has been an implementation mechanism. This is one unique reorganization act which has no institutional mechanism. There is no institutional memory. There is no assigning of responsibility. Now, before this, which you know, there was the bifurcation of uh, uh, Bihar and Jharkhand. At that stage, if you look at that Reorganization Act, it did mention about an institutional mechanism in terms of a cell being created under the Deputy Chairman of the Erstwhile Planning Commission to supervise and overlook the implementation of that. So it is a curious omission that this AP Reorganization Act has no institutional mechanism, has no institutional memory, and has no one to whom it can turn to as a nodal entity. Government of India, which you know very well, is an amorphous, opaque entity. And to say that the government of India is, is directly responsible is in a certain sense, uh, does not serve the same purpose. Second, on the special category status. Now, the point remains that uh, I really wish that this had been given at that time itself because I was present, your members were exceedingly active and they did, I must compliment them, they did an outstanding uh, 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 kind of work. There was, by the way, acclamation on the opposition benches ourselves. I could, I clapped, 
Mr. Jaitley clapped, he was leader of the opposition. Uh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu, uh, you please remember that one of your big promoters at that time happens to be by some accident now your vice president. And he acclaimed this. All of us got up in great acclamation because Dr. Manmohan Singh had broken the glass ceiling which was called the special category status by going out of his way. I had failed miserably in being able to entice a similar uh, response from him uh, in the case of Bihar and so had Naveen failed enormously in being able to extract a similar promise from him. But you did and that I think was this enormous ability of your representatives then with you, with the people of Andhra in impressing upon that. But why didn't, wasn't this uh, achieved? I'll tell you why. The reason that troubles me is this. It doesn't require a finance commission to give this. No one knows better than you on how this creature called special category states came into public display. It was the Mukherjee Gadgil formula and it was a decision of the National Development Council and the Planning Commission was only an implementing arm to implement the decision of the National Development Council. Originally it was given for Assam and GNK as Assam got more and more bifurcated into more components, they got automatically the benefits from the carry forward of what historically they had. The recent times, the only two, which was uh, one of those great moments of uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee, if you remember, and he was not only um, a, a friend and admirer of yours, he made this commitment uh, in respect of Himachal and Uttarakhand, came back and told us, those of us who were working in the PMO, and said in his characteristic Hindi, Ham to ghoshna kar diye hain, baap log janiye now. So it was a Prime Ministerial announcement, which is the only one which came outside the framework of the National Development Council. So that's the origin. Finance Commission had nothing to do with the special category status. Now where you are terrifically right is that if Finance Commission had nothing to do and has nothing to do with special category status, then perhaps that particular remark or that particular observation which is not backed up by more detailed analytical or methodological thing in the Commission's report, which is providing the central government a reuse, that perhaps was also not part of the framework of the Central Finance Commission's work. Because if that sentence had not been used, then perhaps this particular argument that Mr. Jaitley and his colleagues and others are using at you, that perhaps, uh, uh, and since we are working under Chatham House rules here, that fiction may not have existed for the central government. So here we are. That is the factual position. Now what can we do about it? Now that's the issue which is of immediate. We, this is all history. I don't know what we can do about it. I'm open to suggestions. One of the things is that the issue of special category status does not form directly or indirectly or remotely part of the rather detailed terms of reference which has been given to us. And you know better than anyone of us that we are bound by the, by the constitution. And the, this is assigned to us by the President and how do we uh, place ourselves in the position of uh, going outside this. I'll leave this issue, this is not a final thing, but really speaking, if I want, even if I, we want to help you, how do we do so? Now, if you want to say and suggest to us that what if special category status does not form part of the framework of the, of the Finance Commission, why did the earlier Finance Commission do it and aren't you therefore in a position to at least review what they did? That's another matter because uh, uh, technically speaking, every Finance Commission supersedes the earlier Finance Commission, technically speaking. And uh, on that particular issue, subject to what my colleagues have to say, 
I have an open mind on, 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 on that one. I'll leave this issue here. The second important issue which you have raised is the use of the population criteria. Let, and I can see the apprehensions which, you, which the states have not only on this issue of perpetuating poverty, which you said rather sharply, that is governance about perpetuation of poverty or is governance about bringing prosperity. There can be no doubt that it is about bringing prosperity. But uh, there again, if you see, it has nothing to do with the commission that we have been asked to use the later, later uh, census figures. And uh, the earlier finance commission, if you remember, had been asked to use the earlier figures, <coughs> census figures, and they were obliged to do so. However, in their recommendations, two things happened. First, they chose a mix of the two census figures of 2011 and the earlier census figures of 71. Now, if you are going to suggest to us that would you consider using a mix, technically perhaps not, because I am not ruling that out, but fact remains that we have been asked to use the figures of the later census. If we were asked to use or left it to us of what to use, that's a different matter. So we, that's an area in which the Commission has to give further thought. Also, I think we have not been asked to assign any fixed weightage to be given to population in general, uh, excepting emanating from the fact that after all, uh, uh, government exists for the people, uh, the money which we have to assign are the money belonging to the people, people of India and that it is money meant for improving the life quality of the people and the opportunities. That is a fundamental issue uh, on this issue of how to really arrive. But it is not the Commission's intention certainly to penalize uh, the states which have achieved better, uh, better performance because there is another uh, uh, aspect in the term of the reference which has not formed part of the main devolution criteria but when it comes to performing and rewarding states, states which are, have achieved demographic management is one aspect which the term of the reference has asked us to use and therefore the commission is quite at liberty to use that and to be able to use it in a manner where this does not result in this kind of, uh, of, 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 of an outcome. The third important aspect which uh, you have raised is the continuation of the, uh, of the grants, the revenue deficit grants. Now here again, this particular terms of reference which, is, which has been issued in, in, the, in, uh, in, in the terms of reference says if at all, uh, uh, you know, revenue deficit grant to be given under Article 275, you have made a credible case on, on that. Well, right now I think that considering that we have still miles to go and uh, we have not yet completed our consultations with uh, state governments, uh, even, we are not even halfway through, uh, this is an aspect which we will certainly keep in mind. Indeed, the overall aspect from what you have said, uh, Chief Minister, of the nascent stage of your state, the fact that <coughs> this bifurcation you believe uh, and which many of us recognize was kind of imposed on you, you were not in office at that time uh, uh, and it was not an act of your active choice. In fact, the fact that this was done in a unique way where uh, the legislation had not passed any resolution but it was a parliamentary decision, not necessarily a symmetric to what the Andhra Pradesh legislation would have done is uh, lends also credence to the sort of things which you have been mentioning. And uh, I'm going to stop here to we'll continue further because I believe that uh, whatever you have said has great empathy with me personally, has great empathy with my colleagues uh, because uh, enlightened uh, reformers and leaders like you need to find uh, a, a legitimate way in which they can satisfy 
the aspirations of the people who have reposed, reposed great confidence and trust in you. Uh, these little few opening remarks, I'm going to request my colleagues who want to join in first. Ashok, you want to come in? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chief Minister. I recall the days when you had, I was in an IPFP and you had elected me as, selected me as one of your advisors in the Economic Council. So, thank you very much. Uh, first, a general question. You know, if Muhammad Ali Jinnah's two-nation theory on the basis of religion was proved wrong by the breakup of Bangladesh from Pakistan, do you think Padiji and some others who thought that reorganization of states on the basis of language was not right has again been proved right by the breakup of Uttarakhand and Andhra and Telangana. I would be very much interested in your thoughts on maybe over lunch. Now let me come to how Andhra is doing. I recall in 2001 I used to tell you that you are not doing well enough, you need to do better. Let me turn the tables now and say that you are actually doing very well. If the breakup of the state has given some natural advantage to one area, I think it's Andhra, coastal, fertile, Krishna and Godavari Delta, very enterprising people.